And so copywriting and being persuasive is a very learnable skill and it is a very um, quickly learned skill because you don't have to learn all of it in order to start getting results really fast. <laughs> hey, what's going on everybody? Joel Irway here and welcome to another unique, very interesting episode of Sold with Webinars. Uh, if you were listening to the if you're listening to the audio version right now, you do not see a dancing pickle. If you're watching the video uh, on the YouTube channel, you will see a dancing pickle, but I've got a very special guest here. I promise you he's not a pickle. He might show up as a pickle. He might act like a pickle, but my guest here is Jim Edwards, the author of Copywriting Secrets. So very excited to have him on. We're going to talk all things copy. Uh, obviously, when you write webinars, it you know involves a lot of copy. We are probably going to talk avatar creation and uh lots of lots of uh interesting stuff so very excited to have jim on the show jim welcome my man it's been a long time coming and i'm excited for us to finally do this well joel i'm excited to be here thank you so much for having me i'm excited to share with your folks and yes my alter ego is mr pickles everyone's favorite at the fourth of july on a hamburger or with uh Slice, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yes, I uh, I do know what you're saying. All right. <laughs> Everybody loves saying. a pickle. Even Jimmy Buffett sang about a pickle. A yes, he did. in paradise. So. I am a huge, huge Jimmy Buffett fan. So there you go. Many people probably don't expect that from a 35 year old dude, but uh, uh, we saw Jimmy Buffett, and we're going to take a little detour already. But we saw Jimmy Buffett and a uh, um. He had a play. He was doing a play, uh, uh -huh. Escape to Margaritaville. He came to Buffalo unannounced. Uh, it was the closing. Uh, Buffalo was their final stop on the tour. And uh, he showed up at the uh, at the night that we went, which was freaking awesome. So anyway, there little detour. but I'm going to detour even further. Okay. I saw Jimmy Buffett in concert in Williamsburg, Virginia at Zabel Stadium. The summer of 1989. Okay. Were you even born yet? I was. I was three. You were like two? Or you were I three was years three. old. <laughs> All right. There you go. So Jimmy Buffett's been uh, doing that for a while. But let's not digress too much. Yes. I'm excited, man. So we're going to talk all things copywriting. Uh, we chatted here before we started the episode. And uh, we're like, hey, where do you want to take this? You know, what do you want to talk about? And you know, we've had a couple of calls beforehand. We've talked a few times beforehand. And um, you know, on our previous chat, you really dove deep into something that I've never really talked about. Obviously, I do it from an offer standpoint, but I don't really focus on teaching it. And it is incredibly important. We talked about avatars, and uh, as mm -hmm. someone who focuses on copywriting, that is a big focus that you do with teaching your clients, working with your clients. Uh, and I also know you have tons of experience with webinars. You've got your fill your webinar uh, tool, your software that you partner with with Dean on. And so I figured why not start off going down this direction? Like, uh, let's let's talk avatars. Let's talk about who and the importance of okay. dialing in your who, because you've got it down to a science. I saw you walk me through your avatar exercise. So let's, let's start there. What do you think? Okay. So, you know, it's interesting that that's the first place you should go, but it's the last place that anybody thinks to go. And so with, um, you know, Dean and I did uh, film my webinar scripts and I actually created the perfect webinar wizard, not once, but twice for Russell when inside of funnel scripts and, you know, so analyzing all that stuff. And then everybody's like, hey, Jim, what do you think of my webinar title? Hey, Jim, what do you think of my points in my webinar? Hey, Jim, what do you think of my stack? Hey, Jim, what do you think of my clothes? Hey, Jim, what do you think of this? And we always comes back to who are you targeting? Because if we don't know exactly who you're targeting, I don't know if your title's any good. I don't know if your headline's any good. I don't know if your bullets suck. I don't know if your stack's any good. I don't know if your secrets are any good because we don't know who you're targeting. So what most people do, can, can I stand? Is it okay if I stand? Yeah, go for it. Uh, okay. So when, when most people do their avatar, they do one of three things. Only, by the way, only one of them is right. Okay. Uh, 
that's that's I'm giving you the answer ahead of time. So for those of you listening to the one, audio podcast, sorry, Jim, I don't want to cut you off. For, for those of you who are listening to the audio, go check this out on YouTube because Jim is demoing stuff on his whiteboard. So uh, we'll talk right. through okay. it. So you can listen and I'll, I will kind of like echo, echo what I'm seeing so you can listen. But uh, if you want the full experience, go check us out on the uh, on the YouTube channel. OK, so the first thing that they do is they give you an answer that's like way too short. So say, okay, who's, who's your target audience? And they'll say, okay, like busy moms, uh, speakers, uh, authors, coaches, um, uh, childcare providers, or worse, they'll say, everybody, everyone's my target audience because everybody needs what I'm selling. By the way, the surest way to not sell to anybody is to try and sell to everybody. So the reason that short doesn't work is because you, you don't have anything to pin your sales copy on. Like everything is implied. If you say, you know, busy moms, well, why are they busy? Do they have 12 kids, two kids, three kids? Do they work? Are they divorced? Are they poor? Are they rich? Are they, you know, there's all these things that you're assuming. And in order to write great sales copy to promote your webinar, you've got to have things to pin your message to otherwise it's it's not going to work right so then what people do is okay i'm really smart jim i have this link i found on facebook that i can see all these statistics about the people who look at my posts about waffle fries and so my avatar is a male. My Okay, this is a great one. It's really good in this day and age, too. My avatar is 63% male. I don't know what the other 37% is. <laughs> but 63% male between the ages of 42 and 67 makes between $78,316 and $97,412 a year, has 2.3 kids and 1.3 wives. Yep. And that's my avatar. Yep. Oh, well, that's kind of hard to write sales copy for part of a kid. <laughs> so the third way is you got to know their hot buttons. And so the hot buttons are the emotional triggers that are going to make them actually pay attention and are going to allow you to enter the conversation that's going on in their mind. So when we talk about hot buttons, what are we talking about? Well, every single person that you're trying to sell to is on a journey. All of them are on their way from who they think they are to who they think they want to be. And they're at all these different spots in between. And it corresponds to the hero's journey. So all of your avatars, all of your people, and by the way, an avatar is just a way of saying your ideal customer, the representation of your ideal customer. It's not a nine foot tall blue uh, person from a strange planet in a Pixar movie. Okay. Let me, let so me jump in real first, quick, Jim. So I want to yes. make sure we get some clarity here. So the three people, the three um, ways that people can create their avatar, they normally say they go really short. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two is they do number soup. Right, mm -hmm. which is like, oh, they get you know super, super, super specific with like two point four kids, right. right? And the third one right. was what was it again? It was you got to know their hot buttons. You have to understand the hot buttons, the thing that makes them. So the way, but hot buttons even are too hard to kind of grasp unless you have this really cool visual that the people who are watching the video are so much more fortunate than the people who just depend on audio. Come on, this is like. 1910 technology, we could be still doing this with radio. Come on, get over there and watch the video, <laughs> folks, okay? So the first thing that you want to know is what is their current identity? And their current identity is who do they see themselves to be? Not do you, who do you think they are, but who do they see themselves to be? So, you know, you might say, you might call them beginner realtor, okay? Well, let's just pick on real estate agents. It's easy. So then... But in their mind, they're like, I'm not a beginner realtor. I'm a hardworking realtor. And the whole point of sales copy, as you know, is to enter the conversation that's going on in somebody's mind. So in order to do that, first thing you got to do is know what do they call themselves? So if you were to call out to somebody like, you know, there's a commercial on TV right now where it's like making fun of people not knowing people's names and how your name's so important. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I called you Tim instead of Joel, you 
A, if I was like, Tim, 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 you'd be like, who is this fool calling out to? And then if I looked you in the face and you knew I was talking to you and I called you Tim instead of Joel, you'd be like, dude, you're a jerk. You don't even know my name. I'm going to ignore you. And this is the same thing. You got to call them what they're calling themselves. You got to know what they identify. What's their current identity? And then once you know their current identity, you got to know what is the ideal identity that they are striving for. What do they ultimately want to be? So like a hardworking realtor ultimately wants to be a top producer. That's the word that most of them use. That's the phrase. If I became a top producer, that means I'm going to get all these cool payoffs. All these, when I put that hat on, when I assume that mantle, there's all these cool things I'm going to get. I'm going to have freedom. I'm going to have respect. I'm going to have a cool car. I'm going to have all these things that come from being a top producer. But then we're not going to magically transport from here to here. And like I said, each of them's on this journey. Some are at different spots. So what you also have to understand is what is their current focus? What is it that they're paying attention to right now? And I will bring this back to a webinar. Wow, I'm going to bring this whole thing full circle. I'm going to like, dang, that guy's not just crazy, but he's, he, he, he's got it. What is their focus? And the funny thing is, is focus controls perception of everything. Yeah, 100%. So, so if, if this hardworking realtor, if their focus is on lead generation and getting more buyer and seller clients, if I'm, if I start talking to them about passing the real estate exam, or if I start talking to them about how to get an advanced real estate degree, they're not paying attention. It's not on their radar. Everything is, ev is evaluated through this focus of what is my current primary focus? You got to know that. And then yeah, sure. There might be this cool stuff out here, like with car and money and freedom and all that stuff. But right now, you got to know what their current, just immediate objectives, because most people, are they looking five years out or are they looking five minutes into the future? Mm -hmm. Five minutes into the future. So got to scratch that immediate itch. For this person, the immediate itch is, I want to get a deal. If I could just get a deal a week right now, I'd be in clover, okay? So I need a deal, which means I need to get two to three new leads a week that are going to turn into a couple of deals a month. That's what I need to do. Yep. So the thing is, like with the hero's journey, also with this, it's like, hey, I'm going to go try and get deals. But as soon as that happens, immediately they run into problems, okay? Things are not perfect. So you got to know what problems they're dealing with. In this case, it's like, how do I get leads? How do I get, how do I do this without mortgaging my soul? How do I run ads? How do I, you know, use Facebook? All these things, these problems that they're running into. And then you also got to know what's the pain that they're dealing with. You know, the, the pain, not just mildly annoying stuff, but the pain, the stuff that's waking them up in the middle of the night. It's like, you know, I, I, how can I, I can't compete with these realtors that have been around forever. I, I, I don't have a giant thing. I, I, I'm working 18 hours a day. I mean, get in touch. You got to be in touch with the pain so that you can help them. Plus, have you noticed, especially as adults, there are questions that if you don't know the answers to those questions, they, you, you go into vapor lock. Yeah. It's like, you know, how do I use Facebook to get leads? Somebody said I could use Facebook to get leads. How do I use Facebook to get leads? How do I use Facebook to get leads? How do I get use? I mean, it's like they just zone in, man. So you got to know the questions they're asking. You also got to know the roadblocks that are holding them back. I don't have a big advertising budget. I don't have a, if it's all the beliefs that they show, they throw up that they can't get here. You know, I don't have an assistant. I can't afford an assistant. I don't have a fancy car. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have all these things. Okay. And then what you got to know also is, you know, bottom line, what are you looking for? Yeah, sure. It'd be nice to show up to work in a Rolls Royce and all this other stuff. But what is the bottom line stuff that would make them happy? Well, if I could make, and what every realtor who's not making it will tell you, if I could just start making $100,000 a year, that's like what everybody tells you, okay? Because if you know the avatar. 
And so here's the thing that you need to understand. All of your avatars are somewhere along this journey, or all the people who are your avatar are somewhere along here. And the purpose of your webinar and the purpose of your copy is to let them know that whatever it is you're selling is a bridge across this valley of despair. Mm -hmm. Like, if you would like to avoid these problems, if you'd like to avoid this pain, if you'd like to have the answer to these questions and bypass this roadblock so you can get to these bottom line results, then that's what's going to be on this webinar. That's what's going to be in this product. Oh, and if you're already down here and established or stuck rather in this, my product, my webinar, my service, my coaching, whatever is the bridge up out of the pit of despair. Yeah. So when you're talking to people, these are the things you talk about in your sales copy yep. because this is what they care about. They want to solve their problems. They want to get out of pain. They want the answers to the questions. They want to bypass the roadblocks. They want to get the short-term objectives and they want to get the bottom line results. And eventually they want to get to their ideal identity. So one of the things that I want to highlight here, cause it's, it's awesome. Like when, when you're a marketer and you've done this for long enough, like this stuff is kind of, you take it for granted because like you know it internally, but like to regurgitate it, to draw it out, to teach other, whether you're an offer owner, product owner, or maybe other marketers who are still green, like you need to kind of conceptually see, see this. And so I know for me, when I was creating offers and launching my own products, I would always like, you have the glasses there, which are focused. Like, What are they focused on? I would right. like the way that I view that is like, you know, what is it that they are, what do they think is the problem, right? And it's like, it okay. might be the problem. And and <laughs> I guess I'm kind of like trying to have an engaging conversation here because like, that's how I interpret that is like, you know, what do they think is the problem? Because a lot of times people think that the problem is, but you have to kind of shift their beliefs and say, you think that it's X, yes, perception versus reality, right? You think the problem is, Oh, I just need X number of deals or you think I need the, traffic. Yeah. You think the problem <laughs> is Facebook ads, but I'm telling you right now, your offer sucks because if you had a great yeah. offer or a great promise, yeah. like you'd get all the traffic in the world, but they don't want to hear that. What do they yeah. want to buy? They want to buy the next Facebook ads course. They want to know yeah. like if you dig deeper in the Facebook myth or the Facebook problem, the Facebook perception, they're like, oh, well, you know, targeting is all screwed up. What's my targeting? It's like, you think that the like the buttons you put behind the scenes are the reality, but if you get the words correct on the first sentence in your headline, like that'll carry the majority of your headline. What does that take you back to? Your offer, right? Your so, offer sucks. Your offer sucks. Your <laughs> promise sucks. Like your copy sucks. Right. And the reason your offer sucks is because you don't understand who your avatar is and what they really want. And this is again back to the thing of entering the conversation that's going on in their minds. Most people, when they write copy, ultimately want, are telling people, you're wrong, you're stupid, and I know better. Yep. That's what they're saying. It's like, nah, you don't, so you and I can laugh and say, you know, you think you want traffic, but it's really your offer sucks. You think you know, you think you want to know about headlines, but it's really your offer sucks. Yep. The reason your offer sucks is because you don't know, you aren't so in touch with your avatar that you just know what they want. Yep. And so what this perception is reality and then entering the conversation that's going on in their mind, there's a, there's a principle, I think it's from NLP or something that's, um, you know, matching, mirroring, and then leading. I'm, I'm totally butchering this stuff, but I know what I'm trying to say. Meet somebody where they are validate what they're saying, and then lead them in the direction that they need to go. So even if they think they need traffic, you're like, hey, you know what? Traffic is super, super important, and I will show you how to get traffic. But before we get to the traffic, we need to make sure that your, your avatar is straight and that your offer is right. Yep. Oh, okay. And so even if you think that that's not your problem, let's make sure that we have a smooth, uh, conversation all the way from ad to offer 
And the way we make is making sure we're in alignment with our avatar. So, you know, ma no matter where they are, well, I, I, you know, in this case of this, of this guy, you know, focuses on lead generation. Hey, you know, lead generation is super important. And once you have your funnel set up, lead generation is going to be the lifeblood. But first, before we start generating leads, we've got to make sure that your funnel's set up the right way. Yep. So that's a process of education, but you've got to know where they are so you can meet them where they are. Because otherwise, you're not talking with them in your copy. You're talking at them and nobody likes that yep i where i would love to ask your extra your um get your opinion your expertise jim is you know some people are going to be listening to this and they're like okay i get it right you know it's kind of like meeting them where they're at what are they so focused on where they want to throw stones at like facebook ads suck like you know that's what they're thinking about right well now it's like okay well if we're talking about headlines and copy Mm -hmm. but we know that Facebook ads are just one small piece and it might be a, a piece that's in the middle of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what's the best way to turn that into a headline? Do we use a headline that's talking about Facebook ads or is the headline more along the big promise at the end of the rainbow? Does that make, do you understand where I'm coming at? So you're talking about if we were trying to sell a Facebook ads course. No, or... no, no. Uh, sorry. Let, let me, let me create a, uh, let me, uh, try again. Give me a scenario. Give me a scenario. Right. So perfect example is with my, my products. Like I teach people how to, you know, launch seven figure courses, high ticket courses. Right. And mm -hmm. for people, so for the avatar, cause I have multiple avatars, I've got the people who are just starting out and the people who already have a course, but aren't, um, you know, aren't scaling or aren't selling it. I wouldn't even say scaling. They're not selling. Right. A lot of those people who are, who have tried and failed, they will blame Facebook ads. Like, oh, well, I just, you know, my Facebook ads are the problem. Facebook ads are the problem. Facebook ads are the problem. Do I create a head, is my headline on my webinar landing page, does that include Facebook ads? Or is the headline more focused on the end promise of, here's how to launch a seven figure course? And if you're listening right now, like just replace everything I've talked about with your product. Like if you're targeting, you know, if you've got multiple avatars or and same avatar, but they're just in a different stage of the hero's journey, right? Think about what that here's might be the, for you. Yep. Yeah. So here's the one. If, if they think the problem is Facebook ads, then how to sell high ticket courses like crazy without spending a dime on Facebook ads. Yep. That would hook. I mean, if that, if it's, if, if it's, if, I'd be like, okay, cool. You got me. I'll click. And the whole point of, of the ad, if we were talking about an ad, the whole point of the ad is to get the click mm -hmm. from the right person and have them in the right frame of mind. Yep. So, um, so the other thing that you can do is say, now, if they are going to have to use Facebook ads, Okay then we can go how to sell high ticket courses like crazy without watch this oh this is good without wasting a dime on facebook ads mm -hmm. see right now you're wasting money on facebook ads because something in your process is screwed but if we can fix the part of your process that's screwed then you're going to stop wasting money on facebook ads because they're going to start working Yep. See what I did there? Mm -hmm. But it's still, this is the thing they don't want to, to ultimately they're tired of the redheaded monkey on Facebook taking their money so that he can be weird and throw spears at boards and just be a really, really strange human being. Um, and they're tired of supplementing his lifestyle. Yep. And then what, all the things that, that they do over there at, at Zuckerberg land. So yes, if there's something that is that is bugging them, bring it up to the surface and tell them they don't have to do it anymore. Yep. You know, how to, you know, targeting realtors. And, and the other thing is, again, using, um, you know, call outs and stuff, you know, attention, high ticket course creators. Okay, now, now that, that's a call out to 
who they think they are. I mean, that's that's shorthand. That's high ticket. But I mean, now it's like, holy crap, attention, high ticket course creators. How to sell high ticket courses like crazy without wasting a dime on Facebook ads. Dude, who's not going to click that? And, <laughs> and the, the, the thing is, when you're um, not a high ticket course creator, and the thing is, if that's your ad, when they click on this, guess what the headline should be on your landing page? Yep. Same thing. Attention, high ticket course creators. How to sell high ticket courses like crazy without wasting a dime on Facebook ads. I mean, you already teach this. I mean, this is this is the this is the thing you do. Yeah. It's the one big idea that you're following all the way through. But the but this is based on hot buttons that are bugging the crap out of them. You, you got to know the thing and be able to to hone in on the thing that either makes them want to just cuss a blue streak or the thing that has them just going, oh, my God, if I could do that, my like watery in the knees type thing. Like the first time they got a date with with the hot chick or the hot guy, like, oh, my God, I, you know, that kind of look. So it's, it's just that extreme that. And that's the connection. And honestly, if you can connect with that idea, which is built, it's baked into the hot buttons. When you connect with that, the rest of your sales copy can suck. As long as it reinforces this idea and your offer is good, mm -hmm. you're going to make sales. Yep. I think where so many people get stuck, me included, like this was, this is an awesome exercise because where I get stuck is like, I know my avatar really well, but a lot of times I will hyper target on the smallest segment and try and use that as the call out. So for instance, if we were to map out that customer journey that you just drew on the board, like I know, but so I'll, I'll bring this full circle, right? I would... I would get sucked into writing a headline that targets the person who has tried and failed. So it, my headline would be like how to sell high ticket courses with, um, uh, you know, you know, how to, it would be like how, how to, you know, how to optimize your, like, I don't know, something about like optimizing your Facebook ads for high ticket or something like that. But it only speaks, it speaks to one very specific person in the hero's journey of who's tried and failed, which is a smaller segment, right? But when you're going for yeah. a webinar, which is more broad, like you want to get a larger segment of the audience, it's all about how to reposition that copy to speak to a larger audience. So when you wrote the headline without wasting money on Facebook ads, that can target now the person who's just starting out because they still think about Facebook ads like, you know, because that's who I want to talk to is I want to talk to that person who's willing to invest in ads, but doesn't want to waste money like we want that person who was willing to invest but doesn't want to waste and you connected right. it right there so like that's a But here's the f here's the formula. Yep. Okay. The formula is how to big benefit without big pain. And so what we want to know is the overriding no matter where they are in the journey, what's the big place that they want to end up? Okay? The big bottom line thing they want is I want to sell my freaking courses. I want to sell my freaking courses. That's the thing. That's what the bottom line results are. It's, it's like, it, imagine going through like a two hour interview of people, that, you know, just drilling these people about, hey, what's your big hang up? What's your big pain? What's your big thing? And then you get to, you know, just all said and done. What do you want? At the end of the day, like, like that, all their defenses are down. They're pissed off. They're tired. They got to use the bathroom. And you've asked them a question. It's like, look, man, I just want to sell my freaking courses. Oh, okay. How to just sell your freaking courses. And what's the thing down here that's really pissing you off? It's that the only person that's getting rich off my Facebook ads is freaking Facebook. That's who. That's what's pissing me. Oh, so you're upset about wasting money on Facebook ads. Yes, I'm way. Well, have you not been listening to me, you jerk? Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, calm down there, Scooter. <laughs> so, um, and then the next secret once you got this, okay, is what are the kinds of things that you should be talking about on your webinar? Because that's the other, man, I can just teach them. I can teach them all kinds of stuff. I can teach them, teach them, teach them, teach them, teach them. 
Well, the problem is if you're teaching, you ain't selling. Yep. And the only thing that makes people buy is making them emotional. Being logical with them doesn't get them to buy. You've got to make them emotional while you kind of reprogram them. So there's a lot of complicated stuff out there about what you should talk about, but I'm just going to make it really, really easy for you, okay? These are the things, these are the three things that you should talk about, okay? First thing you need to identify is identify the number one thing I don't know, okay? There's one thing they don't know that if they think if they they think if they knew it that they would just be rich as hell, okay? So the number one thing is I don't know. Second one thing is I can't okay? I can't blank. The third thing is I don't have okay? So basically this comes down to knowledge skill and resource. Mm. Okay. That's ultimately what you just got. You're trying to acknowledge, okay, I don't know something. I don't know how to do something. I don't have something. And then you got to flip it. So I don't know where to get leads. Okay. So now we build the, the as far as the copies uh, concerned, Okay, I don't know where to get leads. So what I want to do is flip that. So the the I, the belief that I want to install in them is that blank is super easy if you blank. Okay, which is your stuff. Yep. Okay, so you know I don't know how to get leads. We were on the webinar, we're going to flip that to getting leads is super easy if you have a system for using Facebook ads targeted locally, some something, yep. whatever, whatever you're doing. And then the final thing that you got to do is have a really, 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 really cool hook for that. So that might be um how to get more leads in a so secret number one, how to get more leads in a week than most people get in a year, than most realtors get in a year. I'm literally just making this up, but because I understand the patterns, okay? And it's like, holy crap, you're gonna show me how to get more leads in a week than most realtors get in a year? Yeah. Oh crap. Okay. I'll I'll show up. All right. So then it's the same thing with I can't. So the one that you want to get across in this one is if you have blank, you don't need to know. Blank. So I can't do this. Well, if you have this, you don't need to know. You don't have to be able to do that. Okay. Yep. So, you know, I can't afford to spend a whole bunch of money on ads. Okay. Well, if you have this Facebook group thing, or if you have this special thing, then then you don't have to know, or you don't have to be able to spend a bunch of money on ads. You see what I'm saying? So we're doing the flip. Then we got to have the cool title, which I didn't change my color to, but you, you see what we're doing here. Yep. So it's got to have a cool hook. And then finally down there, I don't have, which is, again, what we want to get across is you don't need blank if you have blank or if you do this. And then it's got a cool hook. Now, here's the other thing that everybody leaves out. So here you go. Each one of these, this is how you create the sales copy for it, by plugging into their deep-seated fear, their deep-seated doubt, their deep-seated objection. In each of these areas, you're going to reprogram it, then the reprogram becomes the basis for the hook, and then the last thing, and this is the thing nobody ever talks about, but this is the thing you got you to gotta implant into all of this when you're doing the webinar, okay? is confidence. 
see, adults, unlike little kids that really don't give a crap whether they're right or whether they're wrong, they just like to try stuff. And then they get that beaten out of them by adults who tell you, oh, you're doing that wrong. That's wrong. You get grades in school and then they, they beat it out of you to, to like test stuff and try stuff and be open to new ideas and new methods. So what you have to do is give them confidence that what you're telling them here is going to work for them because you've got it built into, you know, this whole thing. So the way you do that is with demonstrations by showing them by case studies, but you, you use these for the specific purpose of instilling confidence that they, that they can figure it out, that they can do it, and that they don't have to have the resource they need. Instead of, which a lot of people kind of use this case studies and demos and stuff to like prove it, but proving it is different than using the angle of, this is real subtle. I mean, this is like, but but this is the magic sauce. This right. is the difference between a hamburger and a Big Mac. Um, the confidence, if it's all about instilling confidence, and that's that's critical. So all of this revolves around knowing the frickin' avatar. Because if you don't know what they think they need to know, like the secret thing, or if you don't know what the skill is that they, they're, they're the objection and all that stuff, then you're just talking out of your butt and hoping that you're going to get lucky. Yep. Yeah. So then we get to the offer. The offer is all built around this stuff. But the offer, where most people's offers suck, is that your offer's got to have a really cool title. Your offer's got to have a cool, cool title. It's got to make a crazy cool promise. And then it's got to have an awesome stack that ties back to all of the things that, you're, that are important to your avatar. That's going to help them along the journey to create that bridge that they're trying that you're going to help them either avoid all that stuff or climb up out of the pit and start getting their bottom line results as fast as possible. And all of that ties in with the avatar. Yep. Yeah, this is um I've heard a lot of people talk about you know, I've heard uh, I won't throw names, but you know, everyone's got their pros and cons and the way that you talk, Jim, about coming up with the belief shifting content of like, I don't have the skill, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the resource, like those three things to help them reshape their belief. And now I want to follow Jim's method because he got me to think in a new way that explains to me that I, I don't need this skill. I don't need this knowledge. I don't need this resource, or there's a better way to shorten that gap because that gap's not as large as I thought with Jim's method or with some proprietary method. Like that was incredibly powerful. Like those three, uh, what do you want to call them? Beliefs or it, cause it's not skill sets. Cause one of them is a skill set, but like, it's, it's like those three hooks, those three angles, like if you can knock them down, that's like the three legged tripod, right? It's like, mm -hmm. if you knock those three legs down, like their existing belief is shattered. Right. Right. They're, and you get to replace it and you get to replace it. Right. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. Like, you know, I've heard the three secrets before I've heard many, many like the five pillars, but it's like, <laughs> there's yeah. you know it's the like four corners of the square yeah know? yeah it's like yeah. no like it all comes down to knowledge skill and resource and if mm -hmm. you don't know what they're thinking about you know the knowledge or the skill set or the resources they all believe then you don't have the right to put in to introduce them to a new opportunity to a new solution like that's how that's how yeah. i i interpret that it's like no that makes perfect then sense. you're talking at them it's like buy my stuff, buy my stuff. It's so great. It's so great. It's like, no, well prove to me why I need to buy your stuff. It's like, show me why I don't, why my existing knowledge isn't good enough or is sending me down the wrong path. Show me why my existing skill set is not required or my lack of my belief in lack of skill set that I have is not true. And show me why this certain resource is not required or whatever. And if you can get that 
through my head, then okay, then we can talk about your your potential solution. So, uh, and that all comes right. down to the who. Like everything revolves from the who. It's just, yep. How do you approach? Everything it? starts. Everything starts with the who. And then one last thing, when you're doing the webinar, these won't be the only things that are holding them up. So then what you do is you build, make, make a list of, you know, the other primary things that maybe objections that they're going to have. And, and they all fall into these three areas. And then while you're doing your teaching or your training in this one, you know, I, I don't know how to get leads on Facebook. And then, you know, under that might be, you know, I just I don't even know. I don't know how to convert leads when 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 I get them or what what's the thing. And and you can like have little sub dominoes that you knock down before they even realize that they have them when you're doing the actual training. Mm -hmm. So one of the things you should do right up front with your avatar and once you've got them all defined is start just making a list of all the additional ones or related ones will help you as well. But then you can also start knocking these out when you're doing your offer. Because you can say, you know, like one of the things that we do is, okay, Jim, well, I, all this looks great, but what if I don't know who my avatar is yet? And that's a great question. And that's why we've included the Who Is My Who training plus my five-part Secrets of the Avatar Masterclass, which is going to teach you this, 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 so you can figure out who your who is and exactly who you are called to serve as opposed to anyone else. Well, that sounds great, Jim, but then that sounds good. But what if I need individualized help while I'm working my way through all of this stuff because I've never done this before? Well, the great news is every Thursday at 11 o'clock, we do a live workshop. I mean, it's, it's you just, once you understand this, it's like the whole game is creating the, the, the webinar so that you're just knocking down these objections so that they can't do anything other than just say, well, crap. Yeah. Okay. I'm in, you know, this is great. And, you know, I saw, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something cool that I did on a webinar. Um, this, am I, is this okay? Is this the stuff that you're looking for? Or are you like, nah, yeah, sucks, man. dude, let's talk about something else. Yeah. Um, better than pickles. So don't you start. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> One of the things that I started doing too, because you see this a lot with, um, you know, people start putting big numbers on things and stuff like that, is I say, okay, let's look at how long it's going to take you to do this one part of this process. So let's say that if you're going to implement this, it's going to take you 20 minutes a day, five days a week. And so 20 minutes a day, five days a week times 50 weeks a year, because you're going to take two weeks off, is 5,000 minutes. That's 83 hours of time. So this is why it's important. And I do this in the secret, in one of the secrets, right? So then I ask them during the webinar, how much do you all charge an hour? Just, just out of curiosity, how much, how much do you charge an hour? If someone's going to hire you, how much do you charge an hour? You know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. And this is what I charge three thousand dollars to talk to me on the phone for an hour i charge up to three thousand dollars to talk to me just for one hour on the phone see what i'm doing mm -hmm. and then so people like oh 150 and it's oh 500 someone says oh i've charged five thousand okay great let's just use a, a basic number we could probably agree on like a hundred so a hundred bucks an hour is literally eighty three hundred dollars in hard cost of your time 8,300 bucks. So if we could eliminate this, that means you're not going to spend $8,300 in your time on something that's not getting you. So that's a real cost. So then when I get into the webinar, I say, hey, let me show you how this is going to pay for itself in the first couple of months. So what's 800, eight, what's 8,300 divided by 12? It's like six, 700 bucks. Okay. So if I'm selling something for $1,400, guess what? In the first two months, this pays for itself and everything else is gravy mm -hmm. because I'm saving you all that time over the next 12 months. Yep. And this is real. And by the way, if you make more than $100 an hour, which the majority of the people on this webinar have told me they do, the savings is even more significant and you recoup your investment that much faster. So that's that's a cool little closing thing that I've I've been playing with. Um, you do that during the content? 
piece or during the close? I do that during the close. Yep. So um, anyway, that's, I think we're done at the board. Let's start wrapping this up because I know that you are busy. Well, I mean, it's... I know you wanted to see Mr. Pickles again. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mr. Pickles, you love me. Yeah, you do. I love you. Oh, we've gone, we've gone rogue. We've gone off the deep end. <laughs> there you, you know, go. It's, and for anyone listening right now, like, you can't get enough copywriting training, period. Because I'll tell you right now, so it's just like any training, right? You know, yeah, you want to find the magic bullet. You want to find that one thing that is going to solve all your problems. And a lot of, and you will find it eventually. But like when it comes to copywriting, offer creation, um, you know, content writing, you name it. The more angles, the more times you have people explain it a different way, the better that you're going to become. For instance, I can't tell you how many copywriting books I've purchased, courses I've purchased, trainings, webinars, you name it. I've never heard anybody explain it like Jim did with knocking down the tripod of perfection, the belief tripod. That's what, something I came up with, right? This marketer lingo, but like the three core beliefs of what they, of what they need to, uh, of what you need to knock down for them in order for you to even get the right to give them a solution, to give them the offer. And, um, it just dimensional, it dimensionalizes everything. And, and so I hope you guys all realize the power of what we just went through over the past 30 minutes or so, but Jim, that was awesome, man. Like that was, do you talk about that in your book? Is that like, did we outline, is that at all talked about inside your copywriting secrets book? Um, that's more of an advanced thing. And, you know, one of the things that people talk about copywriting, they think of, okay, copywriting is different from content and content and copywriting should be different and they're not. And, and they're really not. What we're talking about here is communication, sales messages, persuasive writing, persuasive communication. And it all comes, all of it, it's all the same thing. It's just communicating with people in a way that's helping them to make the right decision. And committing them where they are, which is even more important now because of the fact that everybody's bombarded with so much stuff. You know, 20 years ago, a guy named Seth Godin, when you were 15, wrote a book called uh, Permission Marketing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever yep. read it. If you haven't, it's, it's really good. If you have, it's worth reading again because it's more true now than it was when he wrote it 20 years ago. And I think it's over 20 years ago since he since he wrote that book because I was still living in a trailer when I read it <laughs> and um I don't live there anymore so I I think if we don't think of it as copywriting but we think of it as persu being persuasive in our communication and helping people make a great decision the thing about copywriting is that it's learnable patterns it's it's blueprints it's scripts it's it's building blocks it's all these things that you can assemble. And unlike 11th grade English class where you got penalized for copying someone else's work with sales copywriting, you can copy someone else's framework because all the copywriters are copying everybody else's framework and just putting their words into it. And so copywriting and being persuasive is a very learnable skill and it is a very um, quickly learned skill because you don't have to learn all of it in order to start getting results mm -hmm. really fast. So if you need to have a better offer, you should concentrate on what? Copywriting. No, you should concentrate on your avatar oh, first. Okay. And it was a trick question. <laughs> Once you got your avatar straight, and you want to fo you need to focus on offers then you can look at other offers that are working great look at the patterns and apply your avatar to the patterns same thing as if you need to work on your opt-in page for your webinar if you need to work for your web look on work on your webinar if you need to work on ads for your webinar once you've got the avatar straight you can look at proven patterns and apply your avatar to the pattern that's the missing ingredient why everybody messes it up because there's oh go if you want to get good at copy go read good copy well it's not going to do you any good to read good copy if you don't know what you're trying to mash up with the copy which is your freaking avatar mm -hmm. so that's you know 
That's all I have to say about that, Forrest. Oh, can I plug my book, please? Yes. Where can people learn more about copywriting and avatar development? You can get a co- you can get a copy of my book, Copywriting Secrets. It has been put in the hands of over 85,000 people around the world. It has been called a modern day classic. <laughs> um, and you can go to copywritingsecrets.com. And I will give you a copy of the book. All I ask is you just pay a small shipping and handling. Nice. And uh, you'll be able to get this. And one of the things I'm most proud of is all the people that have come up to me in person at conferences or sent me emails. Or we have over a thousand reviews um, of the book. And all the people who have told me that it is, it's, it's changed their lives and, and helped them to do just some crazy, tremendous things in their lives. So it's been, that's, that's how you can learn more about me. That is awesome. So what's and the, what's the link again? Copywritingsecrets.com. Awesome. All right. So we will make sure that yeah. we include a, um, a link in the show notes. Uh, Jim, it's been awesome, man. I mean, I love this. I love Mr. Pickles as much as I laugh at him. I love Mr. Pickles. I love <laughs> <laughs> I love all your avatars, all your who's that you transform into. But I really did enjoy this episode. It was it's a gold mine. It really is. So uh, if you enjoyed this, please go support Jim. Go grab his book. It's worth every penny of shipping and handling that you are going to pay for. And let him know that you heard him on Sold with Webinars. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Jim, thanks again, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody.